Hey, to Castle Gamer. Welcome back to PCM22. This is Dragons, and it's episode number 35. We've progressed a couple of weeks from where we left off with our signing period, and we are getting into our next 2HC race. Before we do so, though, a very, very important discussion is about to take place. Before I get into that, though, just an update on where we're at with our status as uh, compared to the other teams. Signing period being underway and has hit that point where the biggest signings are gone. All seven six-star riders have now been signed up, and we're getting into those five-and-a-half-star guys. And that list has also shortened down at least a bit. But there's still a lot of five-and-a-half-star guys, as we are a team that has lost Michael Schechter for next season. Uh, and... Is he still out there? No, he has already been swept up. Uh, so we'll have to check in on him and see where he will be uh, for next season. Actually, he may not be already swept up. Uh, I think it's just because he's in our dossiers. Yeah, he still has no contract for next season as of right now. Though I strongly suspect it'll be Israel Premier Tech where he is headed. But anyway, with a wide number of five and a half star guys still out there, we could see this change quite drastically. Uh, in the next couple of weeks while those get swept up but we are already down to 18th so we're already down to the bubble zone and, and headed for continental pro the the big key is how much further do we drop is it another seven spots eight spots that would be fine um, you start dropping much further and there's still riders available then we get concerned well anyway on to the important discussion the bulk of our remaining calendar are 2HC and World Tour races and will add up to quite a few episodes. Now, for this series, one, it's been a, a huge hit, uh, but two, we are running short on time. We are now less than two months away from the re release of PCM 23, which I have every intention of progressing into PCM 23 and providing content there. Now, as big of a hit as this has been, I'm likely to do this series uh, in a very similar manner for PCM 23. And here is why. If you have not been on the page, uh, PCM 23 has been announced. It's available on Steam to wishlist at this time. But of all of the editions of PCM. It seems to be on the surface, at least in terms of what has been revealed up to this point, the least advanced PCM edition that there ever has been. As in they have done less to alter the game from a previous edition in the coming year than it ever, ever before. I had some speculation a while back. I've been paying very, very close attention to the development of Cyanide Studios and what they've been working on, but they only reveal so much. And I, as a YouTuber who does have contacts within Cyanide, have no special information. I have no special reveals. I don't know anything that you don't know. I've probably been paying closer attention to the finer details and trying to read between the lines a little more closely. And for that, I have my suspicion on what is going on. And here's where I'm at when it comes to that suspicion. One, I wanna confirm once again that I believe that this is the least difference from one edition to a prior. What, seven years since the last major upgrade to the game? And that being the addition of Pro Cyclist Mode? That's a long time, minor development, year after year. There's a new attribute coming. It's a new attribute for the Tour de France title, but because they share mostly the same team and they share a lot of the mechanics and a lot of the gameplay, PCM is picking it up, but it doesn't actually mean anything. Now the new attribute, medium mountain, but a reality of what it actually is, it already exists as a mechanic in the game. It's a direct 50-50 split of your mountain rating and your hills rating. Now, when and where it's used could change gameplay by this much. 
currently, the way that it operates is your mountain rating here, a 79 for Lieberman and his Hills rating, a 74. Now, if you are going 85 or below and you are climbing at 3% gradient or above, you go off of your flat rating. 3% and below is your flat rating. Minus 3% and below is your downhill rating. So from negative three to positive three, you use your flat rating. From three and above, it transitions to climbing, which is either mountain or hills. Now the difference between the two is the effort that the rider is giving. 85 and below is mountain rating. 95 and above is hills rating. 85 to 95 is the range in which this medium mountain is going to fall in. Now the way the mechanic works in PCM currently, which is slightly different to how the Tour de, uh, Tour de France game works, and that's why they're going to coalesce or coming together to an agreement for the next year. Between 85 and 95, it's a share of the two. And that share depends on the effort given. If you are going 90, you are split right down the middle, and it is a 50-50 share of them. If you're going 86, it's a 90% mountain rating, 10% hills rating, which means your average of those two will depend on that split, on that share. But the mechanic's already there. It's just done behind the scenes. You combine those ratings behind the scenes. Now it's gonna be more on the surface with mountain, medium mountain, and hills. Back to our point, the key being medium mountain already exists behind the scenes in the PCM game. And with the introduction of it, it's not substantially changing the game in any meaningful way. And that's the key feature for the coming year. Beyond that, it's very, very minor stuff, or at least as presented at this time, unless there is a new reveal coming up in the future. That being said, my suspicion, the reason why, is something that's been in the works being planned for multiple years. And that is a new game engine. The game engine is the same game engine that they've had for more than a decade. They've been using it for 11 years now. They're gonna be using it for going on 12 years, I believe is the number that we are at. I, I might be off by one or two, but it has been over a decade that we've been on the same game engine, which is why more than a decade later, the graphics for the game are pretty much the same as they were more than a decade ago, which is why in well over a decade, really, we've only seen two substantial changes to the game. One the addition of pro cyclist mode and two when we first transitioned to this game engine which it turns out for me it was the year that that game engine came out i believe was the first year so i'm i'm going on 12 years having played pcm at, at this point they've been talking about switching to a new game engine for years they've been talking about the difficulty of switching to a game a new game engine and updating the game engine for years reading between the lines behind the scenes seeing multiple interviews regarding cyanide and the whole we only have so many staff my suspicion was there was a number of other non-sports related cyanide games that all came out in recent months and that certain members of those teams developed those games were going to come over and assist the pcm team in order to develop a new game engine. That's my suspicion, that's my guess. I was hoping that this coming year was gonna be the huge reveal and that we were gonna be finally going to the new game engine and that would have been some portion of the reason why we hadn't been getting updates. But actually, it makes perfect sense a massive undertaking of switching to a new game engine was going to be a major enough project to the point that it actually makes sense that it's a multi-year development cycle in order to complete it. And what better way to complete a major undertaking such as that than essentially halting development almost entirely for a year by turning it into a big two-year project. And that's how a small team can undertake a major undertaking while having a yearly release schedule. If I'm right, we are looking at a massive PCM 24 upgrade that will be the biggest and the third biggest in a decade and a half. I could be completely off and I could be grasping at straws 
on my reading between the lines. You've heard it here first. I'm expecting PCM24 to have a new graphics engine. That being said, there is no reason for me to not bring you PCM23 content. Even if the changes are very minor, it's still a game that I love, it's still a game that I enjoy, and it's still a game that I intend on bringing you a full year's worth of continued content. But as is always the case, I progress to the new game, which means this series, oh my goodness, I could have gotten to this point much faster. Maybe I'll have cut out a little bit of my discussion there to uh, shorten this up a bit. But this series is inevitably going to come to an end in two months. If I remember correctly, I am going to post a poll regarding this and let me know in the poll uh, which method you prefer. But going forward with this series, knowing that we have a limited time remaining. First off, my intention for next year is I'm going to essentially take this idea. I'm going to run with it again because uh, if we're looking at largely the same game, a full year of working on this, I think is inev inevitably what it's going to take. I'm going to need that 100 episodes, 130 episodes to run this out long term because it is a major undertaking to try to transform the database in the favor of a handful of nations. Maybe we'll make it an Africa one instead of an Asia one for that uh, as we go forward. But anyway, for the remainder of this series, there are choices to be made decisions to be made. I want your help making that decision. So first off, continue as is doing all of the HC and World Tour races and grabbing all of the points that we can will only get us so far in down our pathway. But being honest, it's the best method. It's going to secure the most points and it's going to give us the best opportunity to progress by taking control and doing everything in our power to help this team out and to raise that database. Second choice, gonna streamline things. This is a multi-year process. Do I streamline things back to the point of where we were before, where we only control the occasional race, the big race, the race that we have goals and objectives in as we try to progress? and see the most years that we can possibly get through, knowing that it's going to take years to advance the database, and therefore we need to get years under our, boat, uh, under our belt. So are years important? Are the individual points important? Or do we go for something down the middle, our third option? Down the middle being finding one rider per season who is our best chance at progression. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best rider that we have. It's the rider from a nation that can be improved upon that themselves are capable of winning in whatever it is their discipline is, right? If that's Schechter, what that would mean is you take every race that Schechter is participating in and you throw all your eggs in that one basket that is Michael Schechter. Everybody else rides for them. And you try to maximize their individual performance over the course of the year so that that individual raises the profile of the nation and boosts the database. And we ignore the other riders quick sending when and where we can, which speeds up, allows us to get through multiple years, not the maximum number of years, but it also gives us the best chance of progressing individually bit by bit and boosting the database that way three options hopefully i'll get that poll up when this is released i'm recording this almost a week ahead of time so got to make sure i remember that one we're not going to get very far if we continue to go one race at a time and that is the only reason why i even bring this up as i think we uh, are sacrificing a lot uh, and with only two months to go in of course, now there's no hold up. I can get back to three episodes per week. That's gonna and we have 20K to go at the Post Nord Denmark Rundt. It's Tour of Denmark. 
Pops 2HC, so there are definitely some points involved. Definitely an opportunity. There's a time trial. It's a short one. Short-ish one. And there is a punchy stage, but it's one that some sprinters will survive. And as we just caught the breakaway with 12k to go, we are going to be lining up uh, our sprint train. Actually, we need to do so now because as we get up around this corner, there's going to be a, and that's the finish line, and it's straight in for that part, but there was that right hinder a little before it. Uh, there is a bit of a hill here that we have to hit twice, but you can see everybody's fresh, ready to go, except the giant sea of red. We have a minus 13 net draw as a team today. That is just about a minus two per rider average on the draw today. Doesn't get much worse. Really doesn't. Uh, plus two, minus two is about the worst net that you could have. I mean, technically minus five, but you never see that across the board. The stage is one thing, but also the overall is something I am thinking about. And as we have plenty of climbers and time trialists that are decent enough, uh, I do want to consider our sprinters, yes, but anybody and everybody is in play. So I want to make sure that no one loses time today as we push through the hill here with 10K to go. So ready, as soon as his red bar is up, uh, he will drop to the back and that has happened now. So we move on. Uh, we want to make sure these guys are staying there, not just to break toe, but to uh, help us out. And let's gel up these few guys here. Just inside 7K to go. One more time on that little hill. And lock with that little descent. And yeah, there you come around. That's pretty close to the finish. That's, that's only about 500 meters out. Okay, gel up for the rest of these guys. On to uh, Yamamoto and Lieberman leaving it out with Terraskid there. Makes it a lot easier on Schechter and Dai as we push forward with uh, 3.6k to go. And Yamamoto is going to start a soft sprint now. Uh, coming out from there with Lieberman now taking over 2.6k. Terraskid 2k. Getting that lead out going. Uh, Schechter 1.5. And Dai, we come around that corner with another corner just after it and are already pushing for the line. Schechter in a good position. Will he hang on, though? It's awfully close. He does not. He gets second place. Egon Larson on the right-hand side just edges him to the line. But Schechter gets a podium, at least. Uh, the guy we were riding for, Dai, had no space, nowhere to go in between. Even though we had guys sprinting, not full-blown sprinting but certainly sprinting uh, just not enough lead out riders with their own capable pace and with all those minuses you know like Schechter on minus two to his flat and so on and so forth made it much harder to get a lead out that kept us out front that just then came down to our sprinters finishing it off uh, Terraskin you can see he used up his energy Schechter and Dai had more left uh, the way that finish came in we knew you could go a little early looks like i could have gone even earlier however the lead out still was an issue today but podium's good out on course with our stage two time trial just 17 kilometers on this one so it's certainly longer than a prologue but it's far from uh, the length of what you're going to see in other time trials and because we just came off of a sprint stage where our team did relatively well, uh, everybody's kind of stacked right on top of each other for this one, which makes it a little bit harder to manage. Yamamoto is going to run out of red bar soon. Therefore, he's going to have to finish off at an 85. Uh, Locke, I started a little bit softer. You can see he's a better time trialist anyway. Yamamoto has a minus three and is in the 60s. Locke is about to pass him. But as we approach the line... Uh, He'll do what he does. He ran out of red bar just before the finish. 47 seconds, over a minute better than Yamamoto. Uh, largely caught up to him. It looks like we might have about 90 seconds st staggered starts. Tereskin's about to set off. Already oh, crosses the line before I had a chance to uh, make my adjustment there. Push again, but it was only a matter of maybe one or se one to two seconds that it would have impacted him on. Lieberman coming up on the line. Die has already set off, so I need to 
get on with his program here and we will put him at an 86 for now it looks like he will be able to speed up a little bit but he's already lost 35 seconds terrible time trialist so i suppose it does not matter Tereskin let's back up to the 85 for a little bit to get him back in the good graces of having more energy than distance to cover there we go oh, i wanted an 86 thank you oh minus three team as a whole super low motivation kind of across the board and our first day expectation of a minus one today is is like a minus four it's getting worse die approaching the finish that yeah, a little too hard with that my bad there you go 208 down for him Schechter at least catching this guy not a great time trialist but certainly better than die but terrible race day condition is going to make it a lot harder on him as he once again for the second day in a row has a minus three race day condition which gives him a net minus five he is one of the ones with that minus one uh, expectation attacking the line 126 down not good our best time is 33 seconds down with lieberman that's good enough for top 20. apparently the low motivation is never a race not enough races for the riders we have guys that have been quite busy this season and that is shocking to see them this disappointed over not getting races when they don't have shortages. But Schechter is going to Avian, not, not Israel Premier Tech. It is World Tour though, and they are punchy. They lack big time sprinters, and that could give him a chance to be the uh, sprint leader for their team. Yes, Damar is their best, and he's definitely better than Damar. So that's that's a good sign there are plenty of guys who can offer him a very good <laughs> repco eventable uh, as one perfect example of giving him excellent lead out capability uh yeah that's that's a, actually a great sign for him uh he's gonna be in world tour definite world tour team and he'll be their sprint leader at least on the surface uh, we are down to 25th just a couple days later. I would imagine that has a lot to do with all the five and a half star guys or most of the five and a half star guys getting swept up as there are just four remaining available. Schechter has been signed, so he's not available anymore either. And these are guys very much down the list. Young guys, though. For now, anyway, 25th still puts us pretty comfortably into Continental Pro. In fact, it's the slight upper half. It's just above the halfway point i do figure we are still going to drop a little bit further but with most of those five and a half star guys out of the way the best five star guys are still going to have an impact comparatively to what we have but we have three of the best five star guys i don't see us dropping a whole lot further so hopefully seven more spots at most is what we could expect to drop which would theoretically keep us and continental pro but uh, it's definitely not a done deal yet and there are plenty of quality riders out there to uh, rain on our parade this is our our punchy stage folks and looking at the profile you can see why i was optimistic that the sprinters could do well here you gain 10 seconds you gain six seconds a couple of times and 20 seconds can put you in a really good place but after that 17k time trial we find our entire team not in a good place in the overall so it's going to require this punchy stage to actually do something in regards to the makeup of the field for us to have any chance of this race really mattering in any recognizable way therefore the last two stages are probably going to be quick sibs unless we see a strong result today uh, that splits field as we go back and get water one final time my sprinters out of it they're they're not in contention for the gc so we are riding for other riders and in the meantime let's go ahead and uh, up the effort so we hold our position as we go forward breakaway still has a decent advantage though it has just split up uh, coming back together through there i think that was attacking through the sprint point was all there you go 
and we're looking at 50k to go. We cannot put our foot down yet, but we absolutely will want to try to put our foot down just to do something. Otherwise, uh, this race is going to be rather meaningless outside of uh, a stage win or two coming out of our sprinters, and I don't need to focus on that one. I can let the uh, quick sim take over on that and we move on to the next race. Even though we haven't voted yet, you haven't voted yet. If you didn't vote, if you didn't hop on over, try to look for that link and vote on that poll on what I should do with the remainder of this series, with our time, remaining time for this series. Uh, one rider off the back so far, and we're looking at 30K to go as we go through that hill, and the last two riders off the front are split up and going to be caught. There is a sprint point here. That's a good opportunity, but like I said, we're not really in contention for that to matter much. But with 27k, it's a bit far out to uh, to be pushing for the line. But Terraskin with a plus three today, it's awesome. That's that's a huge day. Schechter and Die both on plus twos on the day that it doesn't matter. I think they could almost just about hang on to this thing. Let's put them in the back and see what happens. And there we go. Team into place, and that puts us at the head of the field. We got some guys, I think, trying to lead out for the uh, sprint point upcoming. Yes, that's what it is. Lund Anderson. Green jersey wear. Let them do that. Uh, we have split the field for the time. Nope. That came back together. We split the field momentarily there. 22k to go. Ready is 41st at 33 seconds, but with a big negative he's not going to be of much use to us much longer uh, we will with 32 riders try to see if he can hang on at least help break toe so we have split the field well it keeps coming back together but with the continued undulation you never know right this might just continue to split the field and at some point the gap that emerges will stay will remain 17k to go now. Lock leading out Lieberman. And again we split the field. 31 riders now. Somebody trying to go on a solo attack. Carter, Slawick, two of the favorites as we start to lap a rider for the first time. Lock still leading it out for us. And we again split the field now 15. And then immediately back to 60. It's definitely yo-yoing a lot here. 99 for lock. Red bar is gone. Lieberman, let's gel up. Again, now it's 11. Chasing 1. 7.6k. So on to uh, Lieberman as he pushes over the top of that one and gives us a big acceleration. 51 in the current iteration of the group. 5k to go. Lieberman out front, and Yamamoto sprinting. Final punchy climb. Terraskin now sprinting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Die and Schechter also sprinting. Can this be a 1-2-3 finish? There is other teams coming at us, but for now it looks like Terraskin, or is it going to be Die? Die is going to get it. Die is going to get it ahead of Terraskin. That's 10 and 6 seconds gained. Big win. Fred Heim sneaks on through. Lund Anderson uh, also moving on. Er, Andreessen also moving up. Yamamoto takes fifth. Schechter sixth. Grosschartner in the field only manages to get seventh. And we may have time gaps that could put us back in play for the GC. Oh boy, we do have time gaps. Lots of them. So we have a top six riders joined Fred Heim, Lund Andreessen, joined four of my guys with 12 seconds of separation so we're going to gain 22 or better over and that's just three riders and then 19 including Lieberman and then 27 lots of gaps lots and lots and lots of gaps I love it love to see it you so rarely actually get the game to offer them it was a punchy stage mountain stages you see the gaps fairly often punchy stages especially ones with this kind of profile you don't expect to see the gaps but today they were given 
let's see what it does to the GC. Are we in the top 10? Are we in the top five? Are we still nowhere to be seen? Uh, Adam Rutten still leads. Gross Schartner is second. Fredheim is third. Brunel. Tereskin all the way up to fifth. Lieberman all the way up to eighth. Schechter is 13th. Schechter has a chance to move up quite a bit. However, realistically, he's not moving up higher than 10th. Shave off 10 seconds for one stage win. He's looking at 31 seconds down. That moves him into 10th, but then it's 14 to McKenzie. But can we get three guys in the top 10? That's certainly worth a fair amount of points. But with only a couple sprint stages to go, and outside of Schechter getting a result, I don't see this order changing any from where it is now unless Tereskin overtakes Brunel because, you know, there's same time and he outsprints him. Still, that was a big result. That put us in the right direction, and that does put us in a position to earn at least a decent point haul, but I still think it's in our best interest to go ahead and skip those last two stages. After those final two stages, we did not get a podium finish on either stage with either Schechter or Die, so no change in the standing. Schechter picked up one second in an in intermediate sprint at some point, but otherwise, that's it. No change. Fifth. 8th and 13th are the final standings. That's still a good recovery from where we were following that time trial where things uh, just didn't look so strong for our team. That is going to do it for this episode, though. Big question is, do we hang on to our Continental Pro status? But the other big question, of course, is have you taken time to vote in the poll and what direction we should go with the series? Focused on the here and now and doing the best we can to upgrade throughout this season, throughout next season? Should we go for the more streamlined and get as many seasons in as we can possibly manage and see what happens? Or do we do kind of a mixture and focus on one key rider following their pathway and where they can score points throughout the season and otherwise speed things up as best we can? I'm Kath Longaber. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.